Welcome to the Bleed Red Blacks podcast with your hosts Mike, Colin, Shinin, and Santino. Produced by Mark and Johnny Z. Bleed Red Black starts now. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Season 3, Episode 5 of Bleed Red Blacks. We're back in South Keys for a little home cooking, home sweet home this week. Season ticket holder, Mike. He's back. What's up? Back from the Windy City. Glad to be back in the studio. This Rocking is awesome. some Cubs merch. I like it. Always. I like it. Always. Northsider. <laughs> hey, I like it. What's up? Hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Producer Mark is filling in for Janine. Um, Yeah. It's actually Janin, just with a much deeper Op- voice this week. <laughs> <laughs> that operation went well then? Yeah. Opposites, opposites of chalk, man. <laughs> There's the laugh that... There it is. <laughs> Brought to you by Bleed Red Black. <laughs> For that guy that keeps DMing me about the compression of the show, just turn it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You notice I haven't answered you for two years straight when regarding Just Don't listen to it at full volume on your pool speakers. <laughs> he, he's into some sort of multi-level marketing compression business. I'm not aware of. We're we not want into, none of it. I'm going to tell you something. Bleed Red Blacks does barely any money, let alone money for compression. So Aside so, from discount shorts we buy at Winners, that's a story for another day. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, yeah, Santino. Who's, sorry, Santino. What's up, buddy? Good, good. How you doing? You're Nothing like much. you're like a regular now. Yeah, it's I not know. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. I so. got my regular spot. That's like your spot, spot now, Yeah, right? it is. So it is, yeah. It's neat. Like, when you go back to Brazil, you have to take that cushion with you. I might. Or I might just leave my picture here. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> you know, I might tug at the heartstrings a bit, but I don't know if we can handle that. So last week, I said on the show, we will do a shot of the dirty dill pickle vodka that I bought um, in Regina last year for oh. every win that the riders have this year so i'm a man of my word it's called last mountain distillery and this will be the last time i have this (laughs) all right cheers team salute salam alaikum oh wow jesus it's like it's like when you're all the dill pickle chips are gone but there's powder at the bottom and you think it's a good idea to shake the bag into your mouth yeah after you leave it out in the rain for a bit so the liquid (laughs) goes in there first that that tastes like a miss pass interference call in the last drive (laughs) (laughs) At least we know what the refs have been drinking. <laughs> hey, so um, oh, you guys, wow. can you guys keep a secret? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, CFL. C- the CFL, they can keep a secret. That's for sure. Big announcement. What could it be? Wonder what it could be. What could it be? I don't, I don't know, but Trudeau is going to be there rocking a jersey. <sighs> Seventeen. And you know what? This is the question though. So where is he, he going to sit? Because like he's got the north side hair, but that tattoo is pure south side, right? So I think he's going to be just chilling in one of the Subarus, to be honest. He'll be riding shotgun in the log cabin. (laughs) (laughs) And I I think uh, I think the green stuff will be legalized by then. So don't roll the window down on that Subaru. I'm sure they'll have a hot box (laughs) real good. Like, what's the score, man? (laughs) That's a moon roof. (laughs) Uh, Um, Remember my joke about the Subaru, right? Well, that's okay. I voted liberal. (laughs) Oh, pricks. Um, so just a quick shout out here to all CFL fans, media, um, people like us. Let's knock the crust off this week and we're going to challenge ourselves and we're kind of challenging everybody else to, uh, to not rash it up. Let's, let's not rash it up. So the reason I'm motivated to say this is last week, Mike was away on business and his main medium for following the league was Twitter. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't, uh, I mean, it wasn't communicated in a very positive light. I don't think from these people who apparently care about this league, right? Yeah. You see, I mean, right now the CFL has this kind of dark cloud over it when it comes to fans being worried about not only, uh, flags, but how fans are treating other players. It's been a, it's been a year of negativity so far. And of course there was the article that was just released, I believe by the Toronto star talking about how, uh, you know, TSN is basically bankrolling the CFL right now, and they may only have a few years left. So just a quick around the room. Let's just, you know, tell me something you love about the CFL, Santino. Oh, I just, I love the game still. Like, I love the product. There's so many exciting plays. And yeah, I know a lot of the QBs are hurt, but when they're all healthy, um, there are a lot of great athletes in our league. And you know what? Even with all these QBs going down, a lot of these young guys are stepping up and like they're playing well. And I still think that's an interesting storyline and it's exciting. Yep. I think we're seeing year after year more and more um, high level plays. And I think the skill level is increasing big time. And uh, the big boys have always done their thing. And I mean, I think. 
we really need to be showcasing those those skill plays. I mean, every week there's plays that that will rival anything you'll see in any other league, and uh, I, I'd love to. Like, I'm going to focus on that kind of thing and really try to spin it that way. One last thing, I watched some old highlights of Matt Dunnigan uh, about a week ago, just for fun. Uh, he was a gunslinger, and we had a gunslinger in our in our pivot last week. Uh, until he got injured and that's that's what i'm seeing there's a little bit more gunslinging because the speed of the wide receivers is so impressive again it, i feel like it went through a a bit of a lull uh through a few years but now when you see guys like chris williams that can just burn uh the game Darius is Bowman. way exciting <laughs> exactly. name and Rose- like name and roosevelt is just lighting it up and like where did he come from and right? the speed like, of that guy mm-hmm. i forget who his father's name is but he was a former uh vikings uh, wide receiver. I'd say, well, maybe we'll figure it out for next week's show or but something. But something yeah. Carter, anyways. But that guy is fast as yeah. hell too. So yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, and the it, thing is, every team has a guy like that. Like even if you look at like the worst teams in the league, uh, looking at you, Montreal and Winnipeg, uh, like they still have exciting big playmakers who like create excitement for fans. So like even even if you're a fan of one of those teams, like you might not have much to cheer for, but you still do have those couple of star players that'll pull you out to a game. Well, this is great. I'm glad that we've challenged each other. And even if we just do it, at least our Twitter feeds this week will be filled with positive, uh, good stuff, good, good, re- just anything that makes us happy, whether it's funny or awesome. Uh, there's enough stuff going on in this league right now that's that's positive. Let's just try to put the put the baloney behind us if we can and stop making steak out of baloney. Um, all right, let's uh, let's get into some game talk. Let's do this. Let's head into a little commercial action, and then we'll be back with some uh, game recap. Nice. Sometimes you need to go back and then back some more to actually move forwards or sideways. I don't mean go back as far as a streetcar, but maybe halfway back, like to the 50s. I know there are those who say that they can't take the bus. Yes, you can. You just have to be going to the right place. TD Place. Why park and ride when you can ride and park? I've been stuck at Herbin Station for 45 minutes, and I don't quite know why. OC Transpo, where backwards is the new forwards. Around the CFL on the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. All right, so let's talk about the Red Blacks first. We're not going to exactly follow the the timeline from last week, but but whatever. Um, congrats on Saskatchewan for getting a win. I mean, did we jinx a team by my dill pickle shot challenge or I my mean, crying Jordan meme? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Actually, just plant a crying Jordan meme on my face right now. Yeah. I'll wear it. I was waiting for those to come back. Um, I thought someone at the Piffles podcast might come back at us, but they didn't. So oh, I got I got something back at me because in the morning I retweeted or I tweeted something. Uh, it was a, a still shot of uh, Saskatchewan when they played the Great Cup against Montreal, and it's the kick going in, but all the flags for the thirteenth man. <laughs> and I said basically retweet to ruin like a green white's day. And after the game, I can't forget. I think Ferlin or someone yeah, yeah. retweeted the thing. It was just like a picture of the final score, and like he tagged me, in it, and he was like, "Oh, retweet to ruin a red blacks day." <laughs> and I was just like, "That's oh. what that was." Perfect, I saw yeah. it. perfect, perfect, harmless fun, and yeah. just yeah, this yeah, good it was well times. played. It was very well played on his part. So huge win for the Very Blanc, and uh, especially for the coaching staff. But let's get on to what's everyone's mind, honestly. Um, the Trevor Harris injury. He went down awkwardly early, and I assume most people watching thought he was he was done for the year. It looked dirty, man. And anytime you see a knee get twisted up underneath a defender as well, um, you know, one usually assumes the worst. A slinky doesn't bend that way. Like. Um. <laughs> 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 he must be buying those dollar store ones, bud. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I haven't heard any updates about his status. I know Henry's status has been updated today, and it sounds like he's going to be playing this weekend. Uh, Have you guys heard anything about the Harris injury? I know there was some stuff leaked, but nothing official has been released, right? Uh, I think they said he was like week to week. Uh, He did something like a sprained knee and like high ankle sprain, so he's going to be out. They haven't just, yeah. Yeah. So probably he'll be back after the bye, maybe. To me, the high ankle sprain is more concerning. That's a tough tough injury when you play on turf. Um, So let the QB controversy tornado begin 2.0. 
you know, the classic Jensen versus, o- versus O'Brien debate. Like, <laughs> looking at you, Ottawa son. Um, welcome to the CFL, Brock Jensen. All of, all of us here at Bleed Red Blacks, like, we know his CV. We know dude knows how to win three straight championships at North Dakota State while starting all of those games. Big dude, 6'3", 235, can run a 4'7", 40, and had a 5-1 to one TD interception ratio in college. So he's not one of those gunslingers you were talking about earlier, but he's definitely a game manager, big body, and uh, knows how to win. Um, yeah, so Jensen, uh, he, he did okay. I thought he, he in the first half, anyway, uh, 20 for 29, um, total game stats, obviously, 271 and two touchdowns. I mean, a lot of people were frustrated with the second half. Um, we've talked about this numerous times. Good teams with experience make adjustments. And obviously, it's tough for Ottawa to make adjustments with a limited playbook. So no one should really think that uh, should be a big surprise with with Brock at the helm. Right? No, there, the there shouldn't there right shouldn't have top. been zero complaints about those plays. On oh, again, we go back to social media, but we're that we're on that's the barometer for us. He's getting attacked pretty hard, big time, and when right? people are even attacking, like whether it's a spiral or not, like have you ever watched Peyton Manning play football? Like, come on, guys. Um, talking about Naaman Roosevelt, he was a story man. He torched us eight receptions, 182 yards. Keep in mind, we were playing the, the Green White's backup court, uh, quarterback, but uh, Mitchell Gale did awesome, 20 for 36, 354, and one touchdown. I mean, ultimately, he played well enough to give his chan- his team a chance to win, and that's all you can really ask for in this league, right? Uh, big uh, big props for Brad Sinopolate, five receptions, 156. Um, you know, the Fab Four continue to produce, and what's neat is like they don't all seem to go off at the same time. They kind of... A feed on whoever the defense is paying more attention to, and I think that that's a huge advantage for sure. And I think they are pretty, pretty equal as far as breakout and, and skill in general. Um, lastly, I'm not ready to give up on Milo yet, but uh, you need to be better there, Money Milo. And I uh, just want to do a shout out to Zach Evans. What he plays awesome, and I mean, I guess he should have sold his house in Regina sooner, right? Like, isn't that wasn't that the joke? <laughs> yeah. He just sold his house. Yeah. Um, so, dude was everywhere. Six tackles, three sacks. If his hands weren't those of a defensive player, he probably would have had a... Uh, I'm just trying to be polite. Um, he would have had a pick six as well. Um, we all remember his awesome touchdown from last year, right? So, <laughs> anyways, we lost the game 30-29. Amazing kick by the local boy. Um, went five for five, 53. Looks like the, the Green Whites might have a good kicker there. So, what a change from five years ago where we didn't even kick field goals over 50 yards in the league. It's basically happening every week now, so... Yeah. Good on the Green Whites. Uh, hopefully, I want to do too much more uh, dill pickle shots moving forward. I think you guys liked it, though, right? That yeah, wasn't too it was bad. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the worst thing I've ever drank. <laughs> it was no pickled egg, but... Yeah, no, it's no pickled egg. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, I'm going to talk about the Stamps and Blue Bombers. Uh, Calgary won 33-18. to 18. Uh, There was 24,500 Bomber faithful on hand to watch Willie and the boys struggle again. Uh, I emphasize the word faithful there because uh, those fans are suffering. Uh, Like, that's a tough team to watch right now. Uh, And you know what? Like, the Stamps are going to stamp. They rolled over a weak team, and, like, the final result wasn't really a surprise. Bo Bo Jeans Mitchell (laughs) threw for 300 (laughs) yards and three touchdowns. Messam averaged five yards per carry, and that Calgary defense racked up three sacks, forced a QB change, and held the Bombers to 30 yards rushing. Um, And, yeah, like, I don't know what else to say about the Bombers. Like, they just look bad. Uh, Willie's not getting it done, and it's always painful to hear the Boo Birds at home. Uh, Nicholas came in, and he didn't exactly light it up, going uh, five or nine uh, for, from 15 for 88 yards and a TD. He's the QB going forwards because uh, the Bombers have made a change for this week. I think Michael Shea is getting desperate, but he doesn't seem like a long-term answer. And uh, why should we care? Well, Keith Scholigan, uh, once a Red Black, is now a member of uh, the Bombers' defensive line. He had a pretty quiet game, again, uh, just a single tackle. And the Stamps are clearly one of the best teams in the league, so it's always good for us to keep tabs on them because uh, we're right up there with them. Poor Winnipeg. <laughs> there you go. And, like, what a what a weird change compared to, like, us with our new barn and what's happened there and them with their new barn. Right? Just polar opposites, really, and it's amazing uh, – I guess it goes to show what our management guys have done, really. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I'm also going to be talking about the Thai Cats and Eskimos game. Uh, so obviously the Thai Cats roared back to win that one, 37 to 31. And I can't remember the last time I watched two teams play so differently over the course of a game. 
Uh, in the first half, Edmonton dominated the Ticaps, who just couldn't stop anything. But in the second half, Edmonton couldn't move the ball uh, as their offensive line either forgot how to block um, or just got totally dominated, and their defense couldn't stop anything. So Mike Riley threw for 354 and three TDs to Jeremiah Masoli's 391 and three TDs. Uh, for the Eskimos, Darius Bowman and Darrell Walker combined for 21 catches, 251 yards, and two TDs. And for the Thai Cats, Luke, apparently the son of Steve Tasker. Is he? Apparently, the yeah. The former. Oh, yeah, the family doesn't I'm not sure, but we could probably ask Rod Black, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Luke Tasker and uh, Andy Fantuz went off for 17 catches, 226, and two TDs. So uh, down 31-6 to six in the third quarter, the 25-point uh, comeback was the biggest comeback in Thai Cats history. And so, to me, the game really changed when the Thai Cats D-line took over the line of scrimmage and began imposing their will sacking Riley three times. Uh, surprisingly, Edmonton's got a pretty good defensive line as well, but they failed to get a sack, even though Hamilton was starting a rookie at center. And that's pretty impressive. Like, the rookie had a great game. Uh, I can't even remember his name, to be honest. But, like, the center calls all the protections, right? It's okay. So, I'm sure he'll be on the CFO website this time next year. No worries. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Roy Finch. Yeah. Actually, you know what's funny about the CFO website? So, the other day, I went to look up Chris Milo's stats. And uh, if you just go and search Chris Milo, like, he doesn't have a page right now on the CFO. You site. know what else is great? They have the completions and attempts. Uh, uh, mixed up, mixed up yeah. so it's like backwards yeah so actually like every guy has more completions than attempt like that's a good way to boost your rating right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really game, I give a okay coach I just, uh, go out there give 110 percent. you know uh <laughs> that that's really helping DraftKings make some money right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> i want you to catch the balls that aren't throwing you got that yeah <laughs> listen exactly. up this week you're going for twenty eight thousand on DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so good i catch three passes for every attempt <laughs> So uh, Masoli set a CFL record with 23 consecutive completions. But to me, he's still the same guy who only threw for 208 versus a terrible Montreal team the week before. I'm really not sold on him. Uh, he's hot and cold, and I don't think he's a long-term answer for the Ticats, as much as Ticats fans are going to disagree with that. Uh, why should we care about this game? Well, Ticats are our big rivals, and they now have three wins, just like us. Um, and plus, this kind of win is a comeback win that could start like a serious streak. So uh, hopefully that's not the case, but that's definitely like a, a season-defining kind of comeback win. Yeah, and that goes back to what we're talking about exciting about the CFL. I mean, that comeback alone is, is worth the yeah, price of admission, uh, whether you're a, either a fan of either of those teams and you're sitting down watching the game. So um, I'm going to get to the Alouettes and the Toronto Argonauts, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit it was the only game I was able to watch. So let's talk a little bit about Ricky Ray, okay? Let's talk about him. He reminds me of why older vet QBs find ways to read opposition defensive schemes, okay? This guy also understands that moving the pocket can lead to dominant play in this league. I'm going to continue to talk about Ricky Ray. Argos have an ability to turn their opponent's strengths into weaknesses, thanks to a guy like Ricky Ray. All these blitz packages that were put together by Montreal had Ricky Ray rolling out and making plays with his legs and on the move, with his RB stepping up with some big blocks in the backfield. Ricky Ray can spread the ball around like a boss. He's one of the best at it in the league. I love watching it. And this last week, he passed Damon Allen in the Argos all-time touchdown passing list with 78. Now that I got all that Ricky Ray love out of the way, let's ask the big question. What will the Argos look like without Ray Ray as he sits up for up to five weeks? Well, it's going to be a a two-half game, just like our game last week. So... First half, we hang with them. Second half, we dominate them. That's how it's got to be. And I think uh, with their limited playbook with, with the new kid in there, too, I mean, it, it, hopefully it's kind of a mirror image um, of what we saw last week in Saskatchewan. And why should I care as a Red Blacks fan? I mean, I kind of asked myself that while I was watching that game. Uh, <laughs> honest, honest to Betsy. Honest to Betsy. I just got back from uh, Comiskey Park, so it was, uh, you know, a bit of a... So were you able to watch up. it on, on... Did you watch it on the TSN app, or how did you... I was able to get home just, just to see it, so oh, it was okay. good. Oh, okay. Uh, so the top of the East is all huddled up with the Red Blacks, right? I mean, you look at the top of that those standings, and this is a, this is a week now that the Red Blacks have a chance to kind of break away, especially at home. So especially good, with that tie, right? Exactly. I mean, it's it's a that's going to set up some weird num- numerous numbers. <laughs> I, mean, I was very short sighted when I like our whole play for the win thing, mm-hmm. and I think as the year progresses, that tie may have uh, its value. You know, good. It's, it's going to be a lot bigger than what. Last last note on why I should care: the Argos managed with Ricky Ray about thirty minutes of possession leading up until this until this Sunday. So on Monday they possessed the ball for thirty eight minutes. I mean that's something that Ricky Ray's been good at for most of his career is managing the clock. Uh, and anytime uh, on the 
Oh, so there's still some time. Sorry. <laughs> I was just looking to see if the, uh, I was going to get, get the, uh, the old toot and newt. The the <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. Uh, Daedalus looking down the barrel I wanted, of the gun. I, I wanted to quickly talk about Bear Woods in that sideline interview he did uh, at the halftime. It was kind of awesome. He said, quote, a leader between the white lines. That's perfect for a guy who looks like he's coming out of a fish concert parking lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> t- he had 10 tackles in that game and proves once again, you cannot judge a book by its cover. He's having a fantastic season. Good on him. He's a highlight in what is really a pretty poor team all, all around. So, well, that's awesome. Thanks, boys. Let's uh, let's smash it off to a little bumper and uh, come back for some coaches around the table. Never again will you see rings on your table with the CFL-approved OLG Coaster Yellow Edition. It's easy. Go to your local OLG retailer, place a bet on a parlay with no research, watch your bet lose, and boom, coaster! coaster! Bet on the Tie Cats to beat the Red Blacks. Coaster! Coaster. Bet on the Argos to win the East. Coaster! Coaster Coaster come in a variety of price ranges from $2 to $100. After Rake and Juice, you'll never be a long-term winner, but you will always win a coaster with OLG. Welcome to the Coach's Roundtable on the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Game preview. So this weekend, uh, we're back at home, thankfully. It's a nice Sunday afternoon tilt, and uh, Monday's a holiday, so... Get out your dill pickle vodka, boys. It could be a could be a ripper. Um, I'm gonna start off with our own line, and I mean, I mean, okay. So when I wrote this, we hadn't found out that Henry's coming back, um, but with him being a little fragile, I still think it's really important that our our O line needs to step it up. And I had I had reference with a limited playbook and inexperienced quarterback. Uh, even with Henry back, I'm assuming the the playbook may be a little simplified this week. Um, I'm not sure what his ability. I don't think he'd come back unless he's 100. percent Word so. from practice is that he's zipping the ball, so he yeah. should be in good yeah. shape. But as you said, it's going to be really important, like because it's his first game back. If there was ever a game to have like a clean game, don't let your QB get hit. It's this game, and it's going to be tough because you have Sean Lemon, who's obviously going to be motivated. Yeah. You have Ricky Foley. You yeah. have uh, Brian Hall, right? So you have like a hell of a defensive line. And Lemon it's... looked great last uh, last Monday night. So, but that's good on. Yeah. He's, he's he's a kind of a strange man, eh? Like he obviously has got the it's skills. definitely a douchebag, but he can play. But he definitely yeah. has the skills. He's just lacking any <laughs> real substance between his ears, right? Um, allegedly, allegedly. Um, yeah, so I'm with you, and I, I agree with you, Santino. On this point, you make about these little short passes, and those are a great way to get guys guys moving, move the sticks, get the guys involved. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a great way. To... And, and that's where Burst makes his money, right? Like, yeah. I don't think it's being unfair to say Burst is not a deep ball guy at this stage in his career. Like, he, he can throw it, uh, but he doesn't throw it the same way Harris does. But Burst is money. Those, like, 10, 15-yard, 20 passes on a line, hit a guy in stride, let him miss a tackle, like, make someone miss. And, and, and I mean, the... the... The numbers tell it all. I mean, despite our QB issues, like we're still we're still pretty much crushing it. Yeah, and I was going to get quickly to that fact that you watch Burris a lot of those passes. Uh, the reason why Sinopoli had such a great season last year is because Sinopoli was going up the middle exactly. into that into that soft zone uh, that allowed him to kind of pull off the CB, keep the DB in check, and still be able to make a, make a pass. And we're not talking about yeah, we're going back to that. It's a ten yard pass from Burris. Uh, we're not he's not slinging it twenty yards. And, and I think Sinopoli, uh, his hands are, are are looking awesome these days. I don't know what he did in the off season, but he's he's got some stick on son that's for sure so our 158 points uh, on offense continues to lead the cfl because our offense is basically designed to just smash points yeah. which means on the other side of the ball we got to be prepared to control the clock keep keep the two and outs going so that we can continue to roll forward again with henry burris and maybe a limited playbook or whatever hopefully uh we come back out and get some more points on the board above 30 would be nice well, it's funny because like last week we had our worst offensive game of the year, but we still averaged like over six yards per play. Whereas the, <laughs> the previous games, like we were up at like 12, nine, like 10 yards per play. So like, that's just unbelievable. It's the first down every play. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, your cheat code reference is pretty much says it all, right? Left, left, right, right. A, B, A, B, B, uh, select, B, A. Select, select, start. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Defense. With that, all right, let's go talk a little defense. Defense. All right. Uh, well, yeah, you know, like. As much as uh, they have a pretty good offensive line or defensive line, so do we. Uh, Evans went off last week. Sack Evans, I think that should be his new name. And uh, Sack Evans and Whiteside against a weak Argos line, like uh, I think <laughs> that's a pretty good matchup. Um, Mark likes that one. Yeah. <laughs> and, I think I think Sack Mark is a part of it. 
<laughs> there used to be an old punk band from Ottawa called Sack Lunch. I don't know those guys. <laughs> she got them to open at one of the games. Since Lucky Ron got turfed. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened to Lucky Ron? I don't know. Oh. TBD, I guess. I'll have to ask Randy next yeah. time we see him. He's chilling with Trudeau. <laughs> So uh, Ottawa's been fantastic this year against the run, and we really need to shut down the Argos because especially with Ray out, they're really going to want to pound the ball. But if we can shut that down and force them to uh, air it out, the higher the odds are that their rookie makes a mistake. Yeah, especially that Kilgore screen uh, pass directly to the defense is perfect, the one he pulled off Monday night. (laughs) Uh, I want to talk about uh, Damaso Munoz. He continues to go about his business quietly. Um, This Ottawa Red Blacks linebacker had 83 defensive tackles total a few years ago, and he was on that dominant Edmonton Eskimos team, and they were such a dominant uh, defensive team. I have a feeling that number 45, Young Lion, hashtag the young, young Lion, will be back at it stuffing any type of run against the Argos, uh, what they try to put up. He's he's awesome. And just a quick note on D- Damaso Munoz. The Red Blacks signed him to an extension this year, and props should be given again to the front office because a positive force like Damaso in the locker room, has, as he becomes a seasoned CFL vet, He's got a little bit of that NFL locker room experience, so he knows what to say. He says all the right things, which is great. There was a great interview he did this year uh, via Skype with the team, and it, uh, it was aired on the site. It was awesome. So once again, the front office is awesome. I find his experience uh, is really shown with his on-field demeanor and, and composure. Uh, he doesn't seem to be, get as, as rattled or frazzled or razzled or whatever we said last <laughs> um, as a lot of the other young guys. And I think uh, that that excess energy you're wasting by that emotion, like it does tire you out. And I think that's why a game in and game out, he just keeps grinding, you know? Yep. Well, and having a, a veteran guy like that f- uh, around for someone like Antoine Pruneau to learn from is just fantastic, right? Like, I don't think you can put like a, a price on that. No. Nope. And, and Damaso is a really good guy. I mean, you see him biking around town all the time, bikes his game in the stadium, and he's, he's, he'll stop and have a chat. Like, he's, he's a good guy. Um, so I want to talk about another DB. Um, this kid had a tough first year. We all watched Jarrell play. Um, that first year was rough, really rough, um, on everybody, but Jarrell earned, he, he's, he's really, he did it the right way. And we're seeing, we're seeing the fruits of his labor. Um, he's, he has been a little bump, like banged up this year. Um, but he is, he is back now. And I think we really, we really, perform better when he is there he's a pretty dynamic athletic kid and he plays aggressively like does abdul and i think they're a really good combo well here's a question for you do we lose the great cup if gavin starts and if he doesn't miss it with an injury that's it you i you know it's funny you look at the way that (laughs) awesome (laughs) you look at the way the front office handles a guy like jarell gavins they put him in a position that he gets completely burned year one he had rubber legs probably for half the season he was running from one end of the field to the other led the team in tackles at one point if he didn't finish the the leading the team in tackles and that was jasper simmons oh that was jasper simmons (laughs) but jarell gavins was up there as well because they were targeting him yeah for sure and uh and now he's he's playing a real blanket coverage that i like to see and and good on him and good on the team for putting him in the position geared down a bit maybe and like maybe using his energy and his he's a little more field aware if that's the yep. proper term and just being a little more efficient with with all his defending um all right special teams um so our special teams are special <laughs> special i don't know i mean how you doing this whole don't just suck thing i don't know santino i think we might have to raise the bar a little yeah little bit well the, th- the problem is like we're literally giving away points yeah. Like right, last game we had a blocked field goal, we yeah. had a missed field goal, yeah. And both of those field goals, we didn't even get the rouge from, so that's two points, right? Right. We had a punt blocked and returned for a touchdown. So if you look at that swing right there, that's a 16 point swing in a game that we lost by one point. Yeah. So it gets to my point, okay? Two point conversion on the TV TD. Where is it gone? It doesn't exist right now. We talked about this earlier today. Um, and I mean, do the math. Succeed in 51 percent of those, you're now above if you hit all of your converts and we watch enough football to know that the what are the con- what's the conversion rate for converts mid 80s something like that yeah i think this so, year they said it was like it's actually a little bit lower this year right now it's something like but it, so if it's 80 percent, like you don't even have to be successful 50 percent of the time and still turn a profit right take take into account and this is just you, you have to run those numbers but the amount of missed field goals versus touchdowns in that same game you're still gaining a point yeah. on, on those missed field goals so you're allowing a chance to gain points 
either way. I, I just, I, it's just a no brainer. And I was really digging for stats. Of course they don't exist on the two point conversion. Yeah. So I actually bugged uh, somebody that used to write for Yahoo and there's still no stats. So I think there's a big shift about to happen. I think it's going to happen south of the border first. I think they're going to see, and then the old boys club is going to say, hey, it actually does work. Thanks, Mike Tomlin, for not being afraid to walk the plank. And I think that that's going to... Go Steelers. That's going to... Yeah. That's going to really <laughs> trans, really translate up here. Yep. And I would love uh, if Coach Campbell... like I could see Jones going for it. Like He seems like one of those guys where aggression is his, his M.O. And well, If you ride a bike like that, you have to be aggressive, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, wasn't he in town for the Hells Angels convention? <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. On his huffy? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, any, any chance to go to Burt's Rapids, you know? <laughs> It's a gem, gem of Eastern Ontario. You guys ever want to come down here? I'll take you out there. It's a little jaunt off a of boundary road. What's happening? Um, this isn't really special teams related. I just want to say, um, you know, I love leading the league in stats. Like as Red Blacks, like we pretty much do that in everything. But uh, we lead the league in penalties, and uh, that's like kind of deja vu to year one. And I thought we had kind of got out of those silly habits. And uh, I mean. We all watch enough football to know what penalties does to your team, and it literally like takes the wind right out of your sail. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally, totally. Um, coach. Okay, yeah. So I guess that's it. So, coach, you want to uh, wrap, wrap coach. this up? Coach. <coughs> Jesus Christ! This week game. This week's game can't come fast enough. I just want to be on the sidelines playing the Argos yesterday because I still have a disgusting watermelon taste in my mouth from last week's loss. Or maybe I caught something at that Regina strip club. Anyhow, (laughs) of all the damn teams to lose to, it had to be them. And as if the loss wasn't a kick in the balls enough, the Green Whites backed the trailer up with Harris, Kane, and Nadon going down with injuries. So this week, we go back to Burris. Him and the doctor say he's fully healthy, which is probably bullshit, but frankly, I want my MOP back on the field, and he's going to be starting. Elizondo, you went into full-out chicken shit mode last week with runs and hitch screen passes out the wazoo. You were more conservative than a nun at a bachelorette party. Keep in mind we've got 4,000-yard receivers that can stretch the field. Let them loose. Mark, whatever you put in Evan's Gatorade, keep it flowing. Watching him crush the QB and stop running backs deep in their tracks in the backfield was so beautiful that it brought a tear to my eye. And I normally only cry when the Bombers or Alouettes play. On another note, can you please do something about those flags Kane keeps taking? I realize half of them are bullshit. That just comes with the territory of playing in the CFL. But sometimes he drives me crazy. Bob, 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 what the hell are we going to do with your unit? Two block kicks last game. Two! The punt return block for a touchdown and the block on Milo's field goal attempt added up, added up to us spotting Saska Bush 10 friggin' points. If we spot the Argos even one, I swear I'll promote the whole practice squad just to shake things up on your units. I'm not asking you to go out there and win us games, but stop costing us them. I'm not asking you to win the lottery, I just don't want the check to bounce. Got it? Be average, all right? <laughs> okay, man, enough with the negativity. We're finally back at home, and our nation is going to sound like a group of teenage girls at a Justin Bieber concert. Ear-shattering loud. Let's feed off the crowd all game long and make this week's backup actually look like a backup. I got full faith in Hank coming back with the strong performance, because you know it burned his ass to be sitting on the sidelines as Harris, Harris lit things up. The Argos got a Swiss cheese offensive line, so hopefully Evans, Whiteside, and company help Schultz feed the hungry. If we play like we can, there's no reason we shouldn't win 76 to 1. <laughs> thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. <laughs> or oh, thanks, coach. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's rip into one of Mark's creative endeavors and then come back for a little renegade rant and reaction. Right on. Look, there is a tremendous problem at TD Place. It's those friends of Lansdale. They think they can come into our stadium, into our home, and take away our fun. First off, they tried incredibly hard to stop the stadium from being built. I mean, they don't even like sports. Then, when the city council approved the site, like a bunch of losers, they still took it to court, wasting years of potential CFL football. Thankfully, the city had tremendous people on their side, and they won. You know, those were some of my friends, those lawyers, and they're really just the best. But now, these Gleebites are back at it again, complaining about the TD Place sign on the wooden veil and calling it an eyesore. And that's just absurd. It's beautiful and green, like money. And you know who has money? 
winners like me and the Red Blocks. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a wall, a huge wall, a beautiful wall around the Glebe. A wall like you've never seen before. And you know what? They're gonna pay for it. That's right, folks. I'm gonna build a wall around the Glebe and I'm gonna make the Glebe pay for it. The wall is gonna be soundproof. So Southsiders and Northsiders alike can make all the noise they want, ringing cowbells, screaming, blowing in horns, and it's gonna be fantastic. Levites complain about everything and they wanna live in their own world. So boom, I'm gonna make it happen because that's what I do. I get these things done. I'm not afraid to say it. We're at war with these Glebites. They're fun police and they wanna come into our lands down and change our way of supporting the team. And frankly, it's disgusting. Rosie O'Donnell, absolutely disgusting. We need to protect our way of life from these terrible complainers. And I'm not gonna waste any more time. My name is Donald Claire Trump, and I promise to make TD Place great again. This message has been paid for by the joke of a party who nominated a clown as their presidential candidate. Blue Red Blacks does not endorse Donald Claire Trump or agree with his views. Welcome to the Red Black Renegade Rant with Santino Filoso. Appalling, atrocious, offensive, entitled, out of touch, a pain in the ass. Those are just some of the adjectives our nation has used when talking about certain Glebites. I'm not Donald Trump, and I'm not going to paint all Glebites with the same brush, since I'm sure there has to be at least three or four good ones. But residents like John Dance, who was recently featured in the Metro, really don't help the image the rest of the city has about crusty Glebites. Dance, for those of you who don't know, has taken it upon himself to remove a blight, his word, not mine, along the Rideau Canal. What is this blight that causes dance and maybe two or three other people sleepless nights and endless anxiety? The green TD Bank logo on the center of the wooden veil that covers the south side of the stadium. This isn't a new crusade for dance either because he's been trying to remove the knife in the eye, again, his words, not mine, since it was first installed in 2014. Apparently, he's furious that his two years of letters to City Council, OSEG, and TD Bank have gone unanswered. When not writing Oseg to complain about the sign, Dan spends his spare time writing to the Ottawa citizen complaining that the new Lansdowne doesn't have enough pedestrian and cycling access. I'm not sure how he convinced a media outlet to give him a column to bitch about absolutely nothing, but the fact that he did indeed get 15 minutes of fame is just sad. The reality is that nobody is boating, skating, or running along the canal and has ever thought, wow, this experience isn't very good because of that sign on the side of that stadium. Dan says, quote, it just grates on me every time I go by, and I'm sure it grates on a lot of people, end quote. The thing is, what actually grates on people in this fine city of Ottawa isn't a sign 50 meters from the canal, but rather that people like him make hobbies of complaining about it. What grates on me is that something so stupid was even covered by a newspaper. What grates on me is that people like dance only further the stereotype of out-of-touch glebites. What grates on me is that I even have to rant about this. So here's my solution. If someone doesn't like the sign, why not start a Kickstarter campaign so that you and all those other people who hate the sign, meaning those other voices in your head, can all chip in and offer the Red Blacks more than TD Bank is currently paying them for stadium naming rights. Then you can take the sign down and spare your soft eyes. Wow. Um, <laughs> we've, all, we've all been around. We've all traveled. We've all been to lots of sports stadiums, and I, I think it's safe to say um, that is probably one of the more palatable, tiny, little, tasteful signs um, that you see. I mean, Mike, you can speak to it. You were down in Chicago this weekend. I just got I'm sure back. We could, I'm sure we can see the, the Comiskey sign from here almost. It's called Comiskey Park, but it's U.S. singular field, as I do air quotes. Uh, and it's just it's it's covered in advertisements, and it's covered with advertisements inside. And outside's got signage. And, 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 and that's, so is every other professional sports. Yeah. And that's, that's it enables us to have that team. You know, you know the, the Coles entrance to Lambeau Field always grated my cheese, too, every time uh, I hey, had to walk in that like, one. Well, if it wasn't for Cole's notes, you would have never passed high school. Well, right? precisely. I, I was going to say, the intro to your rant sounded a lot more like my performance review at work this week. But, uh, <laughs> mainly the Knife in the, in the aspect, eye. Yeah. Actually, the intro to the rant was basically taking the intro to the Metro article because those were all the words he used to talk about the sign. Wow. So. Well, at least somebody well, I mean, the Well, I mean, part of it goes... <laughs> Part of it, got to ride the train. But, but, but part of it goes back to this, and I, and, I, and I believe this is the argument. They lost the battle against OSEG. They lost the battle against the city's will to put a, uh, well, it's not profitable yet, but a, a stadium there 
that brings people into the Glebe for the first time in, oh, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, and and now they've chosen another battle because that's the only thing they've got left. So you find another battle. It's not just – it's Friends of the Glebe finding another reason to uh, hassle and um, disturb what is a positive force now at uh, TD Place. I'm sure none of the businesses that were struggling prior to that redevelopment are complaining about the sign. I'm sure all the people who own restaurants and work along that street and I've seen I know the pod- some of them and they're happy. I'm he sure is. they're doing quite well. Yeah, very well. So one must assume he doesn't have an invested interest in it aside from just a, you know a hobby. And there's some other people like him. And I mean, I think voicing your opinion it's it's what's cool about this country. You can do so, but uh, let's pick your battles. There's lots of other fights, and, and to waste media space is, is is a shame. I think that's a blight. For well, sure. it's. it's- as much as it's his right to be able to complain about those things, I totally agree, Colin. Uh, it's one of the beautiful things about living in this country is if you don't like something, you have the right to say so. But it's also my right to roll my eyes at you and laugh. So, <laughs> <laughs> But it goes back to the city issues uh, sign um, permits, signage permits. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that's a signage permit that was vetted by the city of Ottawa with community guidelines put in place. So where did he miss the boat? At what point did you not read the those those city those that city planning that was putting signage there, whether it was T D place sure there was a public or KFC session accordingly. Yeah. yeah, or it was KFC Stadium. Who cares? It's 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 called uh at the end of the day, it's it's called making money. And that's what the OSEG people need to do in order to keep that well, stadium the, surviving. And the thing is, he talks about how it looks so unnatural and disgusting and this and that, but like the stadium has like a wooden veil beside it. Like the kind of makes it look a looks, little bit more naturey. Like looks the gorgeous. sign's green. It looks like, awesome. Come on. Yeah, it, it looks, looks, it looks 8, awesome. A thousand times yeah. better than it did before they redid uh, Lansdowne Park. Like think think if that was think if that was Budweiser place. How big would the crown and that sign be, right? You'd be able to see it when you land your plane, and, and it, I swear to God, like, yeah, yeah. like what we got was was it's pretty. It's a very palatable. reasonable size sign, absolutely. But it was up to the city at, at during that application process to decide how big the sign should be. Right. And I mean, at the end of the day, they make the city of Ottawa that governs the people and the businesses who pay taxes, just like yeah. anybody else, has the right to make a decision that says yes, this business deserves this. They're paying a land tax there that's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Right now, and and that's that all goes into it that keeps property taxes as low as possible in that area. And ultimately, the city double whammied them because they won, and they made the law so it, if you ever come at us this again and you lose, you're gonna have to cover our legal costs. That's right. So they not only won, but they pulled the rug out from underneath them. So plus one and plus one for for Oseg. So I mean, sorry guys. I don't know if you feel entitled in the glee, but uh, I mean, times are changing. Had they, had they taken that money they spent suing the city over the Lansdowne, uh, Lansdowne redevelopment, they could have probably bought the naming rights to the stadium. Oh, there you it go. could have been the Friends of the Glebe place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just one giant Birkenstock that you could t- <laughs> that you can tell smells like tofu, <laughs> and that's that's it. All right, that's what <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and anyone who lives south th- south of the highway has got to sit on the other side of the stadium. So. <laughs> you ever had a beer to the clock tower? Yeah, sorry, you're yeah. not you're not one of us. Yeah, you're definitely not from the Glebe. <laughs> you know they make that shit here, right? <laughs> All right, boys. Thanks. That was great. Let's uh, let's do uh, go have a little bit of fun and then come back for a little outro. Right on. The following is a public service announcement from the Glebe Association of Grumbling and Groaning keeping the Glebe quiet since 1837. And now to Graham Barrington Pemberwell. The last area of Glebe houses to be built were on Booth's Fraser Field Lumber Yard, west of Bronson Avenue, and that was in the 1930s. The streets there were named after Booth's timber stands in the Ottawa Valley, Kippewa, Opanogo, Madawaska. Thus, the 40s saw the completion of the development of the Glebe. Streetcars were installed along Bronson Avenue from the 20s to the 50s, and the Kennedy lands to the immediate south of Sunset Boulevard were developed in the late 20s, and that's where we had streetcars. They were loud, but now they're gone and they won't be back. Not on our watch. Remember, no parking. So safe travels, Janine. Uh, someone's got to pay the bills around here, so she's off to Washington tonight. Yeah, to- say hi to Obama. That's right. Yeah, a, say goodbye to Obama. There yeah. you go. And uh, I mean, any chance to get 
get you on the mic, right, bud? Like, well, you know I mean, I realize it's my basement, but, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I understand my role. No like, sense of entitlement. Though. You know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm practice squad. The best, okay. part, the best part is when we leave, like, you still, like, you got to do all your work still. I, sometimes I just leave the mic set up and I just pretend like I'm on the show all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just ask myself questions and move over to your seat. I was wondering what that doll wearing my clothes I left here was in my seat for. Sounds like a brand new Charlie Kaufman film actually in the making. <laughs> um, and we also miss Johnny Z in the house again. That's right. Second Johnny's week been... in a row. Uh, what's is he on the six week disabled? How's that work? Oh, he's just he's week to week. Okay, we'll um, check in on him again next week. He'll be he'll be good. He's still. He's still on the payroll, though, so... Yeah, he's week to week with the case of work. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gross. The job um, that pays is supposed yeah. to this one. <laughs> um, Sunday night at home versus the Argos. That's going to be fun. We got a holiday on Monday. So I assume... I, th- I think people are going to be pretty sideways uh, Sunday night. Yeah, well, I, I think, like, I know, obviously, the tailgate at Brewer is going to be going. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to get there early because it's Sunday. And so, like, there's nothing to stop Right after church. Sure. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And, and then Oseg has something going on at TD Place with the 70, some members of the 76 team. Uh, I wonder why that is a big surprise. Yeah, I know Gabriel will be there and a few other guys. Yeah, uh, Mo- yeah that's right. And um, so that's happening at TD Place early, I think. It's like 4.30 or something. We had talked about this earlier. I really wish uh, there's some way that uh, the Brewer Park, um, the camaraderie and the crew at Brewer Park that are growing and very strong, some way integrate the pregame stuff at the stadium with those people or yeah. some have it in one location or It'd something. It'd be sweet if they could use that lawn, like right behind the stadium beside Cheapskate Hill. That would be perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... I mean, it's not it's not bad having too many things to do, but it would be great if I mean, obviously, it was all yeah. one place, yeah. And the real diehards, let's be honest, they're going to be at Brewer, and I mean, they'll probably have they're the ones that want to see those those guys, right? So. It's great parking. Yeah. Um, speaking of parking, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, we it's run pretty this. much like a knife in the eye yeah. trying to find oh, a parking spot. Right. Oh, like so. It's a blight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've been talking about this earlier, and. Um, there's been multiple reports about what happened with the whole Greg Hardy situation. Um, I read that the CFL, you know, pretty much said, you are not welcome here. I also read that the riders uh, said that uh, they didn't want him. Uh, I think the truth, I mean, you've heard all, all alternate stories. Uh, just for those of you who don't know, Greg Hardy is an ex-NFL guy, a real piece of shit, um, convicted of, of multiple assaults against of, against females, and uh, he doesn't really deserve to even be on earth. Um so when people were comparing the Ricky Williams situation, a guy that has a weed problem, uh, and why would we let him in here compared to a man who has a history of violence and isn't really wanted here? Um, I think it's it's kind of we got to be careful because yeah, we're talking not, about two different things it's here. It's not a one yeah. size fits all. And, and I mean, in some situations, I mean, I think people do deserve a second chance. Yeah. And in some situations, I think that it's it's their their character has obviously spoken for itself, and, yeah. and nothing's going to change. I think that just kind of goes to show as well the character of like the Saskatchewan uh, team because like. This whole story came about because they were trying to sign him. They want his rights on their negotiation list so that if he doesn't catch on in the NFL, he can come up here. That's the whole story. And then the CFL blocked them from doing that. And now they've kind of gone into damage control mode. Like, oh, no, like we didn't like really want him. But it's like, of course you did. If you could have just signed him, you would have. And they probably don't give a shit as long as he's performing. And probably a lot of fans would be willing to forgive him too. Like if he goes out and has like four sacks a game, no one's going to care that he beat the hell out of his girlfriend and almost killed her. Like, yeah. And that's the sad reality, but... The underlying story between on Greg Hardy is simple. The NFL uh, did put in place the suspension mm-hmm. and the act. Uh, he is eligible to play in the NFL now. Now, the reason why he's not playing in the NFL is not because of the right. conviction. Let's go back and talk about Greg Hardy as a person. The man's a the man's a firecracker. Uh, he made comments about uh, uh, Tom Brady's wife, uh, Giselle. He made comments about her. Uh, in a pregame interview that was disgusting. Uh, and it, it, even his own teammates, other players around the league tweet out uh, negative comments about his behavior and its behavior. So let's get back to behavior. As teams continue in the NFL to say, look, we're not going to take a look at Hardy, it's not because of the domestic violence. It's because right. he's a he's got a, he's got got a severe attitude problem. It's because he ripped a, a clipboard out of an assistant coach's hand on the sideline. I was line just about to get to that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that goes back to that chemistry. There's a problem. So even, even going back to the idea that there's a CFL felt team willing to put up with that up here is even even more it's just the whole thing is astonishing to me yeah um and, there's obviously and, a chemical imbalance there and coming north of the border is not going to change anything especially no. going to regina 
like him with a bottle of dill pickle vodka like Whew. man <laughs> like, I, I, like, I don't i don't mean to joke but yeah for real I'm, I, I, regardless of what the truth is i'm just glad he's not he's not here this league's awesome and we don't need we don't need guys like that here yeah, yeah i'm i'm with you and you can't compare ricky williams to an issue like that i mean w- right now the nfl's got a problem with with marijuana use uh and up here there's absolutely no marijuana testing so who I'm, cares i'm sure like we talked about earlier i'm, I'm sure eight to ten guys are are using at least post game, right? It, yeah, you know, help out with uh, getting to pain sleep or, or something pain like and stuff that. Yeah. like that. It's a nice, yeah. I mean, it is a reputable. I mean, it, it is gaining traction. I think even in, in the medical world, and um, as long as the league, I mean, let's not even talk about testing. No, but <laughs> we we wrote an episode about testing last year, and we decided not to do it. Yep. And we haven't ever dug deep into that. But you could probably do a whole hour long podcast just on the history of, of the testing and how that's happened and progressed yes. and gone downhill actually the last ten years and then kind of con- trying to come back to respectability. But um, anyways, we can save that for another time. This outro just got real serious. Yeah, shout out to Ricky Williams for opening up a uh, gym where you can smoke, smoke marijuana weed, yeah. <laughs> and work out. So I mean, it all works out in the end. Um, it's like that time Mark and I went to hot yoga. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward <laughs> for everyone else yeah. turns out it wasn't hot yoga <laughs> turns out it was a buffet yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were actually in the mandarin <laughs> you still sat on the yoga mat so correct <laughs> yeah, awesome right, yeah. awesome That's lots good. of stretch in there still yeah oh man <laughs> <laughs> like what is this yeah <laughs> free bay <Mayfoy>. foy <laughs> lululemons are great buffet pants that's all i can say about that one <laughs> Hey man, you worked it. You rocked those things. Makes your butt look good. If they can, if they can keep so you cont- if they can keep you contained, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, guys. That was awesome. Good times. Uh, let's get a win this weekend. I want to kind of bond. We didn't get to hear those two songs I love so much. And you know, we we kind of take those winning songs for granted. I think right like. Two years ago, we played those things like you'd almost fall out of your chair, right? So <laughs> let's go back on the right track this weekend and uh, come uh, back next week and talk about a, a W. Janine will be back. Mike, you're gone again next I'll week. I'll be on uh, the East Coast. I'll be watching the games. Okay, so we'll we'll see what we could do. Uh, we'll make it happen. Say as hi to we the do. Sooners. Say hi to the Sooners when you're well, out there. Well, yeah. That's oh, and also, uh, I'm you guys... actually out there looking for a spot to move the uh, the Hamilton team. So Oh, oh perfect. Okay. Oh, perfect. They don't deserve the team anymore. So. At least do something. Sell those speakers on Kijiji that keep falling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. See you next week. Cheers. Thank you for stopping by on this week's episode of the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bleed Red Blacks or like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Bleed Red Blacks.